Kelly from The Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Tuesday, October 12th. So the moon is going to be in Capricorn energy again all day today. We did get a little bit of a taste of it yesterday, although we didn't really get to settle into it too much. The energy today, though, will be building towards the first quarter moon in Capricorn later on today, right before we switch into tomorrow's energy. And the first quarter moon always is a crisis point, is a realization, especially when we take a look at what has transpired since the new moon in Libra last week. This is our first set of challenges, our first set of obstacles, especially in trying to manifest some of the intentions that we realized we had to start working on under that new moon in Libra. So the energy today, again, with the moon in Capricorn, emotionally, we're a little bit sad, we're a little bit somber, negative Nancy and Betty the bully are a little bit loud in our heads. We tend to just want to stick to what is going on in our present moment, in our present realms, and of course, just throw ourselves into tasks and chores that will distract us from our emotional confusion and upset. And of course, the name of the game is seeing progress, seeing productivity take place in our physical realms so that we feel like we aren't wasting our time and we aren't wasting our energy. There are 11 different aspects taking place today and 10 of them involve the moon. I just want to throw this out there as well. Tuesdays are ruled over by Mars It's a very aggressive day. If you actually think about your week, you will see that most of the productivity, most of the action gets absolutely activated on Tuesdays. It's our most productive day. Mars being, of course, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our action definitely triggers us on Tuesdays to get down to the nitty gritty and actually do something with our time, with our energy, with our emotions. So with that being said, we have to take a look at the fact that this moon in Capricorn, very earthy, very much just wanting to stick in the physical realm of what is and does not want to think about what could be. We start the day off with the moon in Capricorn making an aspect with Saturn, of course, the ruler over Capricorn energy, just fresh in its direct position in Aquarius now, trying to wake up from the last five months of doing the inner work necessary to recognize where it is that the old systems, the old foundations, the old beliefs, the old relationships, the old ideas, dreams, and visions have to die. They have to be destroyed. They have to crumble. They're not strong enough to house the new calling, the new purpose, the new meaning that our heart and soul is asking us to pursue. The moon and Capricorn bumping into Saturn in this way is likely going to create a situation in our external realms having an outside trigger from a person, from a topic, from a disruption, from a just a shake up in our daily plans that we were not expecting. This is going to put us in a situation where we're going to have to boss up and take control. Now, heads up, this trigger is going to make you want to react. But of course, reacting is out of ego. The best way to do things, especially with this Lord of Karma really testing us now that he's direct. Did you learn anything? Can you walk the walk? Can you talk the talk? Or are you going to fall victim to your old ego patterns, your old ego emotions? And we are really going to get tested here today on whether or not we can switch up our perspective, act As the observer, see where it is that the universe is testing us to see if we actually learned anything. And of course, rising to the occasion, we get to choose whether or not we are going to act in a different way, breaking the chain of past patterns and behavior, or are we going to fall victim to the old? Are we going to repeat, revolve around the same energy, the same frequency, the same perception of how it is that we need to deal with certain triggers and certain activators in our external realm. 
we get a huge pressure in our mental plane here today because Mercury, who is retrograde in Libra, really pushing the life lessons. Because again, this is the last week where we have Mercury and Jupiter in a retrograde. And so Mercury, who is retrograde in Libra, hashing up things from the past, really reflecting back on our relationship status, on every single opportunity that we did not do what is right, did not do what is fair, did not advocate for ourselves. We're having a lot of realizations here. A lot of things are being unearthed in order for us to revise that, re-edit it, rework it in a different way, and of course, integrate it into our new awareness. Mercury bumps into Uranus. Uranus, of course, the great awakener, really showing us where it is that we have to wake up and take our power back, where it is we have to shift our perspective, where it is we have to really break down our old ways of thinking, align with the higher vision, acting as the observer, and see what new paths we can actually visualize moving forward that would, of course, have us on a path of alignment with our soul's mission a lot quicker than what it is that we have been absolutely contemplating. Many of us are like exhausted at this point, trying to think of like, how are we ever going to get to this end goal? And what's beautiful about this is that Mercury rules over the lower level intellect, our ego, that is the practical, logical, uh, linear type of thinking that our ego relies on. Well, this Uranian energy, this is the higher intellect. This is, you know, divine inspiration, aha moments of genius coming in from the higher realms. This is coming in through spirit, through source, through our intuition. And then we bring it in to the lower level intellect where Mercury can process it, balance the scales of logic and practicality with of course, this overwhelming urge to follow our gut, to follow our intuition. And this is really going to open up our eyes to a brand new set of ideas, of details, chunks of information that we haven't quite considered as of yet. And this is going to be a game changer in how it is that we flip the script, how it is that we cut away some steps in the process that we thought we were taking and recognize where it is that we're being detoured in all the right kinds of ways. It probably doesn't feel good, probably doesn't feel right right now, but this Uranian energy sees a bigger, greater plan and picture than we're able to see in our physical lives right now. And so this gut feeling, our intuition is pulling us saying, okay, I don't see it yet. I don't see the tangible rewards coming into my physical realm yet. I don't see the pieces coming into, you know, my daily life yet, but I trust because of the feeling that I have, because of the strength and confidence that I have in my intuition and in my uh, divine plan of the universe, because I trust so greatly, I'm going to take blind steps forward, trusting that there is a greater plan that I need to be following, trusting that I can only make so much sense of the guidance of the inspiration that I'm currently being asked to pursue. The moon goes ahead and makes a little bit of a tension point with Jupiter and Jupiter is still retrograde in Aquarian energy, trying very hard to wrap up the life lessons before Jupiter goes direct on the exact same day that Mercury goes direct. Mind you, let me tell you that has been divinely scripted for a brand new mindset to take over, but we have a little bit of work to do. The moon in Capricorn making this little bit of a tension point with Jupiter is really going to highlight again, where negative Nancy is kind of telling us, Hmm, maybe we shouldn't push ourselves too much. Maybe we shouldn't bite off that dream right now. Again, reminder, moon and Capricorn doesn't want to think about the future. Jupiter wants to think about the future. The moon and Capricorn does not. The moon and Capricorn would like to stick to the old attachments, what is tried, tested, and true. Jupiter wants us to abandon that comfortability to push ourselves into a brand new territory where, of course, we can align with something higher, something more meaningful, something more purposeful, and actually see the blessings, the rewards, abundance come in for, of course, taking a leap of faith. But the moon in Capricorn is not about that. The moon in Capricorn does not even want to think about that. And that's why we get this push and pull in our emotions, because we're feeling pulled in a direction that is unfamiliar to us, in a path that really doesn't make sense to us. 
But the moon in Capricorn is just like, okay, I know I have these feelings. I know I have these urges. I don't know what to make of them. I'm getting overwhelmed. I don't like to think about the future or my feelings. So I'm going to throw myself into work, into tasks, into chores that I can tangibly put my hands on, see rewards of progress and productivity from. And this is why we're a little bit conflicted. This is why there is another war going on between our heart and our head, between our future self and our present self. Now, the moon goes ahead and makes this harmonious interaction with the true node. And of course, we all know that the true node is asking us to align to our greater, grander dream, our vision for the future. And what did we just discover? Well, we don't want to think about the future. We want to stick in this present moment. The moon in Capricorn trying very hard just to put the blinders on, keep one's head down and just focused on the task at hand really can't help the feelings that are coming up, trying to distract ourselves from the present moment by thinking about how lovely, how beautiful, how calming, how peaceful it could be if we weren't in our physical realms right now and we were living out a dream and a vision that of course has captured our heart, has triggered and activated a new passion and desire within us. And for a split second, the moon in Capricorn is really taking a good look at what it is that we are dreaming about and contemplating what it is that we actually have to build as far as a bridge goes to get us from where it is that we presently are to where it is that we futuristically want to be. The moon in Capricorn is a great manifester. You know, that's the creator energy. We have the ability, especially thinking about long-term foundations and structures, we have the ability to start implementing baby steps, implementing cornerstones and foundations of what needs to be built in order for us to actually see our future dreams and visions take root, take life. So the moon is kind of on one here because we bump into Neptune. And Neptune, of course, is retrograde in Pisces in Neptune's place of power. Neptune is all about our intuition, our spirit, our karma, soul contracts, life lessons. And of course, Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over this Capricorn moon, is all about thinking about trusting about the higher source, the higher plan. Now, Saturn coming out of a retrograde, we've been in a retrograde since May, people. A lot has taken place since May. And many of us reached a breaking point and are still very much standing on the edge. But Saturn, now direct, is waking up out of this beautiful inner healing realm and now saying, oh, damn, okay, now I get to take action. Now I get to do something about this. What am I going to do about it? I'm entering into a brand new soul contract, a brand new timeline. There's a new energy to work with. What am I going to do about it? Well, the moon bumping into Neptune right now is uh, going to give us a little bit of a blip, if you will, of what it is in our intuition, in our vision for the future that we're working towards. And again, the moon in Capricorn does this in a very practical way. You know, my Capricorn friends, they like to pretend that they don't believe in astrology. They like to pretend that they're not in alignment with the universe. And they're just such practical people that unless they see it for themselves, unless they have tangible proof and their own experience, they would prefer to just stick to what is proven, what is and so the moon in Capricorn has a hard time really trying to align with something that does not make sense. But Capricorn energy is very connected to intuition, to spirit, to the universe. They just like to deny it because, again, Nancy, negative Nancy is the cheerleader of this Capricorn energy. And my Capricorn friends have a hard time pushing themselves past the point of ego to step into their spiritual practice, into their spiritual lives. And so the moon bumping into Neptune right now is just a validation point that, you know what, there's a gut reaction coming out of the present moment right now that the moon and Capricorn just can't ignore. We have to listen to what's going on inside of us and then take it through the ringer of that beautiful, brilliant, logical and practical mind that the moon and Capricorn kind of puts us in and mulls over the emotions coming up, trying to make sense of them all. Now, there's a little bit of friction that enters into our realm at this point because the moon goes ahead and squares Chiron. Chiron is the wounded healer. 
and very much retrograde in Aries right now, really exposing to us our ego wounds, our identity wounds, where it is that we need to boss up and unleash the spiritual warrior inside of us in order to fight for what is right for our freedom, for our choices, for the new experiences that we want to have. The moon, of course, though, very grounded, very much wanting to stick to what is old, tried, tested and true, has a problem with dealing with the emotions of it all right now because emotions are not Capricorn's forte. It is not something they can make sense out of. So there is a little bit of an aha moment here where we recognize there is some overwhelming emotions arising to the surface and we're trying very hard to just put our blinders on to ignore it. We're actually pouring more energy and attention into trying to ignore what is going on just below the surface of our heart space than we are in anything else. It's a good distraction to try and pour our physical energy into tasks and chores but we realized very kind of early on that uh, we're kind of uh, not going to win this very much of a losing battle when it comes to trying to ignore our emotional state as of right now the moon squares mercury who is retrograde in libra mercury rules over the mental plane this moon in capricorn is ruling over our emotions let me tell you, Capricorn and Libra and energy couldn't be further away from one another. One is Earth, the other one is air. And Mercury wants to hash up all of these things from the past, wants to just really review and revise and re-edit re all of these memories, all of these thoughts, all of these topics and themes coming up from the past. And you know what? As much as the moon in Scorpio doesn't want to think about the future he definitely does not want to think about the past so we do have a little bit of a conflict here in our inner narrative in our mental plane and of course the overwhelming uh urge to try and ignore the emotions coming up as well and it's not going to bode very well for us we will find especially midpoint during the day that we are at odds with ourselves we are trying very hard to get a grip grasp over our mental plane over our heart space and guess what it does not feel like we are winning on either side we do get a little bit of bump a little bit of help in this energy because the moon in capricorn goes ahead and trines beautiful energy with uranus uranus is retrograde in taurus Capricorn and Taurus are sister signs. They're both earth signs. They very much just want to focus on the here and now, this physical realm, what is tangible, what is logical, what is practical. So the moon in Capricorn bumping into this Uranian energy is a shift in perspective. This is kind of where we're like, okay, you know what? My head space isn't doing me any favors. My heart space isn't doing me any favors. I obviously can't run from thinking about some of the topics and themes that are being illuminated for me right now. So let's break it down. Now, what I love about this is that the Capricorn energy, who is ruled over by Saturn, Uranian energy is also ruled over by Saturn. Saturn is the old traditional ruler, while Uranus is, of course, the modern day ruler over the Aquarian energy. Now, what just happened with the Aquarian energy? Well, we have Saturn going direct in this Aquarian energy. This is another shift in the human collective. This is another shift in the consciousness of the collective. We are awakening to new information. We are having a shakeup in our relationships, in our resources, in our money matters. In what it is that we always thought was going to be there, always thought was going to be reliable. The moon in Capricorn right now is having to take a good look at all the changes that are taking place, especially in the foundational realm of our physical environment in order to see that, yep, we are breaking away from the old and yep, it's scary as hell. But guess what? There's a new dream and a new vision taking place. And now we've been awakened to certain information that we cannot unknow. The practical and logical mindset of the Capricorn energy in the emotional heart space realm of what's going on right now really wants to make sense of the new information coming in, the new mindset taking over, this new want, need and desire to rebel 
against the old systems, the old structures that we know are not supporting us and moving forward that technically have been built in order to keep us trapped in a state of paralysis of fear, in a state of paralysis of non-action. There's a lot going on right now. And the moon and Capricorn bumping into Uranus is really trying to shake things up, really trying to wake us up to a different path really trying to illuminate for us where it is that, yeah, it might be uncomfortable to sit in this state of old uh, patterns and behaviors. And it might be scary to think about the future. And it might be overwhelming to contemplate the changes that are going on in this realm and how it is having an emotional effect on us, whether we want to choose to believe it or not. But once this perspective shifts, there is an airy energy that takes over that really provides us with a huge understanding of what's going on inside of us and what's going on outside of us as well. The moon bumps into the true node and this isn't the most positive aspect. Again, there is a conflict because the moon in Capricorn does not want to think about the future and does not want to think about the past. But we just had a huge illumination of information and of a new path emerging that we have to make sense of. We can't ignore it. We are being called to take action, to move one step in the right direction, taking us away from where it is that we've been stagnant, where it is that we've been sitting in our own negative Nancy narratives. And the moon bumping into the true node right now is helping us to rework a couple of things in our mental plane, in our heart space, and mostly at this point in our physical realms. Now, this is going to be an activator of sorts because the moon is going to go ahead and square Mars, who is in Libra. This is going to really create a lot of energy and likely a lot of frustration, energy, irritable energy, aggressive energy that we can make work for us in all the right ways because Mars just wants to make a move, wants to make action, wants to tangibly put our hands on something that of course we can see an end result with and the moon in Capricorn just wants to pour all of this confusion all of this lack of clarity all of these you know thoughts and emotions that we would rather distract ourselves from we really just want to distract ourselves from the inner workings of our inner realms by tangibly taking action in our physical realms and Mars is all about it but again this might come by triggering a lot of aggressive energy, a lot of frustration in us, a lot of negativity in us. But like I keep saying, that is some of the most powerful energy that we can use as a motivator, as a catalyst to actually make a change in our physical realms. So I actually see this as being uh, something that we might do just because we don't want to snap, just because we don't want to cry, just because we don't want to sit in our feelings. And then at the end of the day, actually feel good about the productivity that we did. Now, we might not resolve our thoughts or feelings, but we have a change in our physical reality that we are happy about, that we can feel good about because we didn't waste our day, our energy, our time and attention on all the thoughts and all the feels that, of course, the moon and Capricorn wants us to distract ourselves from. And this, my friends, is when the moon goes ahead and squares the sun. And this is what makes our first quarter moon. This is a square. This is a tension point. This is a conflict. The moon, of course, is our emotions. It is our intuition. It is our subconscious. It essentially is the old part of ourselves that we are holding on desperately to because we're afraid of change. The sun, of course, is illuminating our life force. What is what needs to be the sun is in Libra showing us where it is that we need to balance the scales, where it is that we need more love and peace and harmony in our lives, where it is that we need to fight to do what is right to advocate for ourselves to speak up to speak out to tell our story to speak the truth. And the moon in Capricorn really does not want to do any of that. Now, here's where things get interesting. This Capricorn energy is the boss. OK, this is the authority figure and we could be put in a position where out of pain and suffering, out of discomfort, out of anger and irritation, we boss up and make a change. We stand up for something that literally has been agitating us all day, literally backing us into a corner, literally putting us in the most negative Nancy funk all day. And then suddenly we just can't take it anymore. 
we have a, an emotional outburst, if you will. We have a little bit of a vocalized outburst as well. Speaking from a place of just not willing to take much more. And although it feels like we are letting our egos take control here and put us in a situation where we just open our mouth and see what comes out, it is actually needed at this point because we need to stop keeping everything in and we need to release some of these energies in our physical realms to see how other people are going to respond to it. You know, it's easy to take a stand in imaginary land. It's not so easy to take a stand in our physical realms. We have people that have their own thoughts and opinions, their own emotions, their own views that are likely going to respond in a way to our truth, our tantrum, our advocacy for our own well-being. They're going to have something to say about it. But that is exactly where we need to stand up and make a change right now to see where it is that we're standing in other people's lives. Again, like I ran it about last week, many of us have concocted this new dream, this new vision, this new set of goals for ourselves, for our future. And we've painted a picture of, you know, kind of drawing some stick figures in of the people in our present life that we would like to see there. Well, we don't want to see them there with their same old, same old. They're going to need to step up they're going to need to elevate. They're going to need to grow and evolve before we're going to actually take a permanent marker and draw their little face into our future vision and our future dream. I feel like this little tension point, this outburst, this vocalization, this I've had enough of this crap is really going to provide us with an opportunity to say, oh, OK, well, here's what I need from you. And if you don't give me this, then you're not going to be part of my future vision, my future dream. And maybe that's exactly what we, re we need right now. We need to revise our dreams, our plans, and who it is that actually deserves to be standing next to us when we reach our goal.